Hi there. <laughs> You're watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cup on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our channels. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman out there is... Eric Zandona in Vancouver, Washington. Wow, Eric, this has been a hike through Sonora, man. Yeah. <laughs> We've been through the highlands and the rocks and the... the but now... Now we get to relax. We get that we, we've been we've been dealing with Sonora and Bacanora, and mm -hmm. we are going to be tasting and dissecting Masot Bacanora Anisado. Anis. That's right. So Anisado Anis. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who have never had anis, or you may have tasted it or pulled it out in some tequilas or some mezcals that are aged, it is kind of like a licorice. Yeah. Um, and I have been, this is a, oh, by the way, uh, mine's at 42 ABV. Is that what yours says? Yep. Yep. Mine's 42. Cool. All right. Good. Um, this is coming to you from, uh, Borderland Spirits who made this happen. Thank you, Michael Hurley for, for just giving us some wonderful, wonderful, what, what a tour. This yeah. is a, a tour. This is like the tour de force of Bacanora and, and Sonora. I'm going to use a Glen Cairn as well. Um, this is an anisado. Now, previous to this, we had the Bacanora Uvalama, mm -hmm. um, which is really unusual. And it wasn't until at, at like the tail end of our tasting that we discovered we can actually put it in our coffee. So guess what we're doing tomorrow morning? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I think there's a, an Instagram story coming. <laughs> yeah, there, I'm sure there is. Well, if there is, please tag me so I can like repost it because <laughs> I want to see you put that in your coffee, bro. Um, again, this is this is a beautiful color. Uh, yeah, unlike it has this really lovely like red hue to it. Yeah, slightly pinkish. It's just really lovely. It. it I'm not even. There you go. Yeah, not beautiful legs and tears. You know, this stuff is is. Uh, uh, the whole line from Masot is is what I would consider rustic. Uh, um, uh, what's the word that they're using in, in artisanal? Because they're using yeah. they're using those words in mezcal. So yeah, and they have that on the label here too. Yeah, uh, it's very artisanal, rustic. It, not necessarily rustical because I, I was very impressed with the 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 drinkability and and, and the approachable uh, mm -hmm. flavor profiles. But this is some beautiful legs and tears on this, man. This thing, look at this. This thing looks like a like an añejo. Yeah. So it clings on and slowly drips down. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. <sighs> the anise you're getting is and it's really different than the anise you get from barrels to, from, from barrels and tequila. You you only yeah. get a faintness. This comes right up to you and says, hi. <laughs> yeah. So to me, the I'm getting a sense that the Bacanora that they used for this is more similar to the Blanco that we tasted earlier that had all that fruit character, that yeah. bright, like, strawberry character. So the Uvalama had this, like, real earthy herbal character to it. But this... The anise is there for sure, but it's mixed with this like fruitiness that to me is I'm thinking is coming directly from the Bacanora itself. Well, we got a lot of uh, and again, um, when we did the Masot Blanco, uh, uh, Eric had a, a higher ABV than I did. It was only it was only two percentage points, but it, it does make a difference. But overall, there was a, a fresh berry, a fresh fruit berry. Yeah, quality to the nose. It was amazing. It was a very. It must have been even brighter for you because you had it at two two yeah. percentage points. So it must have just come right up and go, like a bowl of fruit. You know, yeah. fresh fruit. And you're right. This one, this one is carrying that that bright fruitiness. Yeah. With, with the anise. Now I I'll be honest. The first time I ever had anise wasn't in tequila so much as I had it in ouzo. Yeah. Um and. Um, it was funny. I, I the first time I ever had ouzo, somebody was telling me that at the time uh, ouzo is not was not as um, regulated, and so some ouzos 
drank very easily and others would just knock you off your bar stool. <laughs> but uh, but there's that that definite licorice and in Uzo it's a it's a really strong licorice forward uh, yeah because uh, like in so there's so the what we know is like black licorice flavor comes from a couple of different plants so there's the anise seed there's fennel and then there's licorice and they're all sort of the same flavor because it has the same chemical compound but in each different plant it's expressed slightly differently because of the different makeup of the plant so so you're getting it so it's not a really it's not if you don't like black licorice don't be afraid of this anise yeah or asado. It's just, it's really light and faint, but it's just wonderfully mixed with this, like, fruit character in the Bacanora. And it's just really just delightful, this smell. Yeah, it's presenting it so well. It's just yeah. adding another layer to that. And again, the, the Masot Blanco that we had had a very fresh fruit berryness to it. Yeah. And that's what's coming through. It's com what's coming across. Yeah. Oh, we gotta we gotta try it. We gotta dive in. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. That's so good. So on the label, they mentioned that th having this at like a festival, like um Easter and Christmas. This is just, I mean, to me, it's it kind of, it's, this is like a Christmas drink. This is like, so it just warm and it envelops you. It's just like warm and inviting and comforting and just cheerful and joyous. And just, it's really just good. You're, to drink. Such, you're such a romantic. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, if you're going to drink booze for a living, why not? Yeah, no, it's true. You, you, if, by the way, if you want to catch Eric at his best, watch our Palmia tasting. He just <laughs> went to town. He was he was yeah. transported. He, you know, it's like he had a like like he had a a, a, a liquid passport. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So on the side of the bottle, they tell you a little bit about the history of Bacanora in Sonora, but then at the very bottom, they give you a little bit of information about the anisado and sort of how the local people in sonora uh consume this so so on on cold days which you know in sonora again is is northern mexico so it's not you know there are parts of that that yeah. state and that country they they even get snow so yeah. you know they get they get it's not all southern arizona so uh i I can't, the, the the brightness of the anise is so it's so bright, you know. Sometimes when when I get anise um, out of a uh, let's say, uh, sometimes I get it from a from a blanco tequila that that mm. just unaged, and it's yeah. uh, and sometimes even at a higher ABV, it's it really is more of a licorice. This this anise is is much more like. Uh, as it says, it's kind of like it, like baked, like in baked cookies. Yeah. And, and you know, um, in New Mexico, we have uh, uh, they had um, uh, cookies called bizcochitos, that are that are made in a certain way, you know, and and they make them during the holidays. Mm -hmm. So I can see this, you know, paired up with your favorite holiday uh, dishes uh dessert dishes yeah and it would pair really really well yeah wow that's just amazing stuff man yeah this is also i think this would be a really nice like after dinner drink okay all right so i'm just thinking about because uh like have you ever had an italian dinner where like at the end like maybe they'll have like little biscotti like the the yeah. co hard cookies yeah yeah um well, some say, some of those are flavored with anise seed yes and um so i could see this being a really nice it's slightly sweet 
but it's got this that anise flavor and it's a little bit fruity so i think this would be a really nice i think this would pair well with cheese um as well um like if you got a nice like aged cheddar or some other like uh cheeses uh, like hard cheeses i think this would pair really well with that would you pair this with like uh, dried fruits for instance like like dates or figs things like that yeah would yeah, that be do fun? that I, I mean, I think it might be a little bit much, but if you got a sweet tooth, I think that, that would probably work well. Oh, um, speaking of which, maybe some chocolate. Some dark yeah. cacao. Dark chocolate, yeah, yeah. Would pair really well, nicely with this. You so. know, this is a, such a, this, and I, and I said this earlier in one of the other tastings, it's interesting to me how, how Bacanora in and of itself had this terrible reputation you know that it was a, a clandestine spirit and they had to make it up in the hills and they had this moonshine thing right. and yet it is such a refined the ones that all the ones that we've had today we've had we've, had, yeah. we've gone through six of these different ones six yeah. different episodes and they're so refined that it it's not anywhere near any moonshine none of these yeah. had had None of these were cloying. None of these had these the hot, warm, fuzzy like some mezcals will give you that nice long finish. Not that there's anything wrong with that, um, but these are so approachable. And even in the intake, you know, n none of these had any smoke on them. No, uh, I, I beg to differ that that this was not. Um, it's it's a complete it, this makes me feel like the bacchanor has been a completely misunderstood all yeah. for 100 years yeah i mean this is the thing like i've had armagnacs they've been aged in barrels for like 40 years and you take a sip and it's like on fire and you're like ah it probably needs another 20 in the barrel <laughs> like, calm down these are all unaged spirits at over 40 percent alcohol and they're so soft and delicate and refined like you said and it's just the the people who are making these have been doing a really great job for generations and you know it's not surprising because like if you're even if you're making a clandestine spirit but you're making it for yourself and for your family you don't want to drink fire like yeah. So it doesn't surprise me that these people know what they're doing. Yeah, it, they're, they're definitely the hand of the maker. Sure. The, the, it's just what a lovely spirit. And again, I I have no choice. Brand yeah. Promise nominee yeah. uh, in 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 the Anisado category of Bacanora. This is just mm -hmm. been, what a delight this has been uh, throughout the the whole tasting. Masot Bacanora. This is the Anis Anisado. Uh, by the way, like you said, I think this would be a great, you know, ingredient in, 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 in some of your cocktails as well. I, I wouldn't see why not. Yeah. Uh, it would be interesting to see, to, to cut a, a, a mixologist loose with th with this as a, as a, um, as an ingredient. Be interesting yeah. to see what you come up with. Just as like a wild crazy idea i mean there's a cocktail called a sazerac which is like a whiskey cocktail that has a little bit of absinthe and absinthe is known for having this kind of like anise flavor right you use a little bit of this instead of absinthe maybe like a quarter of an ounce or something i mean you could really create something really fun and interesting yeah um i think i think the the, the bacanoras that we've had especially the uva Lama and this one the anisado would be really, really fun to play with. Yeah. Uh, and, and if all else fails, great on dessert and coffee, you know? <laughs> so um, I don't know what else to say, man. This has been great. Thank you to Borderland Spirits who yeah, made this happen. Sure. Michael Hurley. Jeez, you know, he, he uh, his company is, is um, based in Tucson, and these, the, the, his vision itself is for, for not just – making it uh, um, uh, available to, to, uh, to people here in the States, but also to promote the culture itself. He's very 
uh, cultural sustainability as well as eco ecological sustainability and socioeconomic sustainability. All, all three of these, uh, his uh, vision is uh, uh, the way he sees his company is that you can't separate the three. The three of these all go together and have to meld together in order for this thing to work. And, and congratulations to him because as far as I can tell, yeah. this, this is going to be a hit. You folks need to watch it in Arizona, and then, and hopefully it'll it'll get to Texas. I hope it comes to South Texas because they're they're dying for stuff like this. You know the authenticity, the where the the Hispanic and, and Mexican culture um, thrives in these areas. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if you see stuff like this in New Mexico sooner than later. All these areas that are, uh, and eventually in California, but but I think I think in California that they're. they're you guys aren't ready for this yet, but <laughs> but you but you will be. Maybe maybe parts of San Diego. I mean, yeah, you and I off camera talked about uh, uh, s some somebody in 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 Tijuana making gin. So you know, maybe um, the Sonoran Desert encompasses Baja California as well. So why not? Um, you know, it, it's also known for for wine country. But um, wow, amazing stuff, my yeah. soul. Masot is the the uh, the deer. I think it's uh, in the native language of that uh, of the indigenous yeah. people here. Uh, opata, the, op the opata people uh, of the Sierra would call a masot uh, the deer, and the deer is a, a stealthy, sneaky. It's a it's like a ghost. You don't you don't see him coming. He's there. You're hunting for him. You, you can't find him, but you know he's there. Um, you know whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever turns you on, that's, that's our take on Masot. This is the Anisado. Go find it. This is amazing. You won't be sorry. Well, I don't even know what the price points are, but it doesn't matter. If you can find it, yeah. right, reach out to, to Borderland Spirits. They'll, they'll be able to tell you where they are. Um, if you're watching us right now, we're taping this in, in, at the end of May. We're still quarantined in place, okay? By the time you see this, it could be the holidays. I don't know because we're there's so many spirits we have on sipping off the cuff. But um, you know, he just launched. He actually just launched this this uh, Borderland Spirits in January and February, and then every everything came to a screeching halt in March. So yeah, you know, he's he's been he's been really smart though, yeah, making the rounds uh, to get that brand known. So um, if you see this this video sooner than later. Go get it. You're not going to be sorry if you're looking to be, uh, uh, a, a, you know, challenged in your palate, or if you're just not, if you're just not a big mezcal fan, try Bacanora. Try these yeah. these lines of Bacanora. I think I think this is a really good en entryway into something completely different and almost the same. So, yeah. but that you know, that's our take. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman out there is. Eric Zandona in Vancouver, Washington. You have been sipping and watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our channels. Don't forget to subscribe to us, whether you're watching us on YouTube or listening to us on iTunes. It doesn't matter. The one thing you need to worry about and, and think about completely is to, is to tomar sabiamente. <laughs> <Surprisingly>. <laughs>